Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to talk about digital ocean spaces. So before we take a look at the digital ocean space dashboard and configuration and code, let's just first try to understand what digital ocean spaces is and what does it offer. Digital ocean spaces is an S3 compatible object storage, which basically means you can use the Amazon AWS S3 SDK to interact with a digital ocean space. It also has a built in CDN which means accessing content from a digital ocean space across the world is fast. And that's what digital ocean spaces is in, in brief. Now let's take a look at the pricing as well. So digital ocean spaces comes at $5 per month. Uh, so it gives you 250 gigs of storage, one TB of outbound transfer, unlimited uploads and unlimited spaces. So a couple of things here, $5 per month is flat pricing, which is pretty good. Uh, it also offers unlimited spaces, which is basically similar to buckets in S3. So you can create unlimited buckets and the total of the data that you put in those buckets should, shouldn't be greater than 250 GB. If you exceed this limit, uh, you would be charged according to their, uh, according to the rate. Also the one TB transfer isn't for one space. It is a cumulative of all the spaces that you have created. So even if you have 20 spaces, that doesn't mean you get 20 TB of outbound transfer. You still get one TB of outbound transfer under this five dollar uh, pricing tier now let's just uh, take a look at how do you set up a digital ocean space so this is basically my digital ocean spaces dashboard i have a spaces tab here which i clicked on and i have two spaces currently uh, a test upload space and a react audio uploads space which i'm using for one of my projects and this one is uh, for this particular thing now you can create unlimited amount of spaces by going over create and clicking on here and you have to go through uh, really simple steps like name and, and stuff like that and you'd get a space up and running a space is always connected to a project that you have and then you have all of these things which i've uploaded uh, it's pretty much the same file which i've uploaded uh, for, for testing purpose right so you have this new folder creation you can upload files directly there are settings which we might uh, get into next but before that I just want to show you uh, how do you create or generate keys uh, for you to be able to access digital ocean spaces. So on spaces dashboard, you click on manage keys and then you have tokens and keys. So I haven't used personal tokens and I'm not sure how, like what are they used for, but I've used the spaces access keys. But what you do is basically you just click on generate new key and this will create a key which is similar to an AWS SDK API key. So it'll generate like a public key and a private key, which you then use in your backend to connect to an digital ocean space. And we'll get to that in the later part of the video as well. Now let's just go to the settings section, which I think is pretty important. Now here, this is the first most important thing, I guess, uh, which is file listing. So this basically tells who can access the files, right? So you have an enable file listing, which is basically anyone can is able to see all the files in the in the space and get access to them. Uh, so if you have something which is public, like images or or uh, stuff like that, which you are going to load on a website, then it makes sense to have like a public public bucket. But if you have things which are specific to a particular user, which only a user is able to access, then it makes sense to have a restricted restricted file listing. Right, so you can toggle that here. There is a CDN uh, toggle here, which you can, which you want it to be enabled so as to uh, make your content load really fast uh, across across the world. So I've enabled it by by default. It comes disabled. I don't know why, uh, but you can click on edit. You can disable the CDN. You can use a custom domain. Which I'm not sure um, how do you use it. And then also you have an um, an edge cache. Uh, time to live which you can toggle uh, then you can also purge cache so that it caches the new content so if you push something new uh, it'll, you just click on purge content so it will remove everything from the cdn and then new content will be pushed uh, to the to the delivery network right uh, this is again the third thing course configurations this is also very important because whenever you are trying to access uh, the content of a space from a website, you need to have this configured. Now uh, you can add configurations. So here you put the origin. So which origins are allowed to request to this particular space. 
Uh, now for me, I have put star. If if you put localhost, it doesn't accept it. So you have to put star uh, if you're trying to do like local development. But in production, you would probably put the uh, domain name of your website. You have allowed methods as well. So you can specify what methods are allowed for the client to make onto this particular uh, particular space, right? So if you want like only a read only bucket, then you just allow get. If you want a, a, a put only space, which is basically a create and read bucket, then you click on get and put. If you want to delete also, then you get to, then you can uh, allow get put delete and so on and so forth, right? Uh, there is also another thing called allowed headers which is also important because if you don't do this uh, it's going to give you an error uh, when you try to upload something to the digital ocean space right so let me take let me show you my configuration so for me origin is star i have pretty much allowed everything i have a header name which is put to star so that it allows every single header there is an also an access control max age which i'm not 100 percent sure what this is uh, but I'll just let it set to default, which is zero seconds, right? So then cancel. So this is the course configuration that you have. You have also this endpoint, uh, and then you can destroy the space, right? So this is a very simple version of an S3 dashboard, uh, but this gets the job done. So uh, yeah, cool. So now let's take a look at the demo that I have prepared for you guys. This is the demo that I have for you guys. So you can browse a file. Uh, I'm gonna select this one. Uh, this is one of the things that I made for a project of mine and then let it upload. So it starts uploading to the space and then it spits out a, spits out the name of the file or the key basically. Uh, so this is the key in my space. So I can copy and put it here and I can say get file. And this basically loads it in a uh, video element or you can right click uh, save link as and you can download it as well right so uh, this is the basic demo so this has two operations one is to put and one is to read uh, and we'll now take a look at the code um, i have two things on the screen right now this is the front end and this is the back end so i'm pretty sure you'd be more interested uh, in the back end so we'll take a look at the back end first and then we'll take a look at the front end so this is uh, an express server uh, uses the AWS SDK. Uh, this uses dot config to load stuff, uh, pretty standard stuff. You have the bucket name, which is test uploads. Uh, this is my endpoint. So this is how you initialize the AWS SDK. You say AWS dot endpoint, you pass in the endpoint that you have in the dashboard that you have here. So you pass it here uh, and then you initialize a AWS SDK endpoint. And then you basically initialize a digital ocean spaces endpoint. That's my D spaces. Uh, then you initialize an S3 object. So you say new dot, uh, sorry, a, new AWS dot S3. The endpoint, you pass in the endpoint and the AW, uh, and the access key ID and the secret access key uh, to initialize the S, S3 object. And once you have that, I have two routes. Uh, let me just, yeah, I have the two routes. I have an upload and a download route. Uh, and the down, uh, in the upload route, um, I just create a key, uh, just use the current timestamp, append it with MP4 because the, it's, I'm uploading a video. Uh, I put in a bucket name, uh, which is test uploads. I give it a key, expires 1800. So uh, just to give you context, this, this upload endpoint spits out a uh, signed URL because remember this is a restricted bucket. So nobody can directly upload to the bucket, you have to create a pre-signed URL and then using that URL, you are able to upload uh, to the bucket, right? So the upload and download don't necessarily upload or download files to a digital ocean space. What they give out is a pre-signed URL, which the front end can use, uh, which the front end can then use to upload or download, uh, download a file from the, from the space, right? So you give an expire. So this is, I think in seconds. So this is three minutes, I guess. So the pre-signed URL expires in three minutes. So upload has to, uh, has to start at least in, 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 in three minutes uh, from the time it has been created. And you have the content type, which is video slash MP4 for, uh, for a video. 
and then you use the get signed get signed url promise uh, from the aws s3 sdk you put in the you say what you're trying to do so i'm trying to put an object you say put object uh, s3 params from here uh, and yeah i just return the upload url right now let's take a look at what happens in the front end uh, so this is my this is my front end basically and the demo.js so here you request so whenever someone clicks on upload and you upload a file uh, it gets converted to a blob and uh, i mean first it is read using file reader you read it as an array and uh, a blob is created from it which is like a which is like a generic type of type of binary data and then the front end requests a pre-signed url from the back end um, and then you just use the pre-signed url to upload things uh, to the to the digital ocean space right and then it just gives out the name whenever someone requests a download they request for a particular key uh, so you put in the bucket name now you can also take this from the request i'm taking only key from the request because i have only one bucket name uh, and then you say get url use the same method but here uh, you put in get object as as the first param and then you return the pre-signed url right and similarly uh, in the demo.js whenever uh, so whenever you click on get file this is the method that gets triggered uh, request for the uh, file by passing in the file name as a key then you wait for the response then you load the video using the video html tag and uh, the src as the data.url property and yeah you can also download it using ARF. so yeah that's the demo basically it's a pretty simple demo uh, and yeah that's how easy it is to kind of uh, do some basic operations with digital ocean spaces now let's just talk about why would you choose digital ocean spaces right personally uh, i i have pretty much bought into the digital ocean ecosystem right so i have a couple of droplets i have a couple of, couple of projects on digital ocean I've been uh, using DigitalOcean for, for quite a long time. That's why I used DigitalOcean space, right? So that could be one reason. There is one thing that I like about DigitalOcean space is that there is no limit on how, ma how many put or uh, get requests that, that you can do to a DigitalOcean space. Uh, at least I haven't found them anywhere on the website. Uh, if you guys have, do let me know uh, in the comments below. The other thing that I like is it has it has a flat pricing of uh, five dollars uh i know if i compare it with if i compare my usage with s3 i'm pretty sure i'm paying more uh but uh, i don't know like five dollars for 250 gigs one tb uh storage i think it sounds like a good deal at least at least at a poc level maybe when i push my project into production then uh, i can think of switching to something like s3 or even cloudflare r2 fourth thing is it's hassle free i mean it's really really simple to set up a space, get it up and running, uh, and download and upload stuff from it, as you can see in the demo, right? Uh, those are some points that I feel why you should try DigitalOcean Spaces. Uh, now let's just talk about why not to use DigitalOcean Spaces, right? So the first point that I want to bring up is it is not suitable for advanced use cases, right? So if you take a look at this table here, so this table talks about S3 compatibility, and as you can see, AWS S3 SDK that you use to connect with the digital ocean spaces isn't 100% compatible, right? There are still a few functions which are in uh, which are in the S SDK which you cannot use with digital ocean spaces, right? The bandwidth that you see here, right? The 1 TB outbound uh, outbound transfer bandwidth, right? So this is not only to the outside internet meaning anything outside of the digital ocean network but it is also uh, if you have a if you have a space in say uh, hosted in digital ocean uh, frankfurt region and then you have a digital ocean droplet hosted in like uh, i think singapore right uh, the 1 tb bandwidth will also contribute to that transfer uh, s3 uh, has this for free so inside of s3 inside of the aws network you can transfer as much as you want and it won't contribute to uh, to the bandwidth cost
now the fourth point is something that i haven't personally experienced but uh, i have seen a lot of people complain digital ocean space takes a long time to load content over the cd and as compared to s3 but personally i didn't find it i have made a comparison between s3 loading times versus a digital ocean loading time i guess that's pretty much it for this video if you find this video helpful uh, share it with your friends uh, hit like subscribe and all that good stuff thank you guys for joining um, and i'll see you guys in the next one mm -hmm.